WCBI News at 10 starts now. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Cash Matlock. It's only been two weeks since basketball legend Kobe Bryant and eight others tragically died in a plane crash. People in the Golden Triangle are still mourning the loss and celebrated those lives with a candlelight vigil today. Our Andrea Turner was there and has the story. We all come together and just celebrate Kobe. Yes, right. Well, we love the Lakers. Amen. A community still mourning. You know, so while we have breath in our body, you know, let's remember to love our love. The tragic death of Kobe Bryant and eight others is still fresh on the minds of his fans. Some fans like Maddie Jenkins reflected on the moment she heard the tragic news. When I found that he had passed, tears just started to roll like he was part of my family because he'd been in our lives for so long. LA was too far to travel, so they decided to have their own memorial service here locally. Chester and area no baby. I want Knoxville County and the surrounding areas to show their support for this family. To do a, something like this in a small town, it means a lot. Ending the vigil, singing worship songs and remembering the lives lost. We love There were over a dozen people at the vigil. It is overall quiet this evening across the region. Temperatures still mild in the 50s and 60s. There are some showers, though, moving their way on in. One severe thunderstorm warning in far southwestern Arkansas. Tonight, I don't expect any problems, just some passing showers and thunderstorms. The later we go, the better the chance will be. By morning, looking more at numerous to widespread showers and storms out the door. Lows only down into the 50s. We're back into the 60s tomorrow. Rain and storms are expected. Heavy rain and flooding is a threat. There could be a stronger storm, too, though the big focus for this week's high-impact weather event is going to be the widespread flooding. We'll talk about that, how much rain we expect, and when the chance for a few strong storms will be later on in the show. In national news, Democrats are blanketing New Hampshire this weekend, making last-minute efforts to sway voters in Tuesday's crucial presidential primary. CBS News correspondent Skylar Henry is on the ground with the candidates and the voters. My point is that I have enormous experience. Former Vice President Joe Biden says his Washington track record is the key to defeating President Trump. Pete Buttigieg says his South Bend mayoral experience makes him the ideal candidate. And that problem solving instinct that mayors have is just one reason why we need to start getting Washington to look a little more like our best run cities and towns instead of the other way around. In Hanover, Bernie Sanders talked universal health care and said on CBS's Face the Nation, he's calling for an expansion of Medicare. But it's not a takeover. People will still go to the same doctor. They'll go to the same hospital. We will substantially lower the cost of prescription drugs. Tuesday's Democratic primary may help narrow the field of candidates as Bernie Sanders tries to hold on to his lead against Pete Buttigieg, who gained ground in the Iowa caucuses. The latest CBS News battleground tracker shows 29% of likely New Hampshire voters say Sanders is their first choice nominee, followed by Buttigieg at 25% with Elizabeth Warren, Joe Biden, and Amy Klobuchar trailing. Massachusetts high school seniors Peyton Ahola and Katie Hennessy are in New Hampshire, knocking on doors for Buttigieg. I think that it's really about getting everyone out to actually go to the polls and vote. But not everyone is in a hurry to decide, like this couple at a Klobuchar event. We're still kind of on the fence. We're between two. We have until Tuesday. Many here agree. Only about four in ten likely voters say they've definitely made up their minds on a candidate. Bill Clinton is the only president in recent times to win the White House after losing both the Iowa caucuses and the New Hampshire primary. Well, the city of uh, Verona welcomed a new, oh, I'm sorry, a Lee County boy getting a chance to be a kid after battling cancer. Jade Smith is now five, but his early years were spent in hospitals. He fought the disease. Our Tyler Hall has more on Jace and the exciting trip that's about to happen. Jace was diagnosed uh, a little over three years ago with uh, cancer. This is Marty Smith, Jace's father. Jace has been living with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Today, his family and the Make-A-Wish Foundation granted his wish to go to Disney. <laughs> Cancer has forced Jace to miss out on a lot of things, but now 
The cancer's gone, and he and his family are off to the most magical place on earth. And now uh, he's gone to where he's to the point that he's able to go to school. He's cancer free. Smith says he is excited to see his son's face light up with joy. Well, it was it was it was great to hear that you know he's cancer free, and that way to realize that he might be able to do things that uh, he hadn't he's missed out on because of it. He's able to go back to school. He can get out and play and do things that he wasn't able to do at first. Make-A-Wish worker Lauren Stacy says that being able to grant these wishes are special. It's really special. I've been involved with Make-A-Wish for a couple of years now, and um, I was just talking to my, my wish partner about this, but um, you really bond with the families. Reporting in Tupelo, Tyler Hall, WCBI News. The family will take their trip at the end of this month. Well, Sunshine Stables welcomes New Faces, the therapeutic horse arena that is designed to help horses with disabilities held their volunteer orientation and training Saturday. During training, they had mock lessons and practice emergency procedures. Executive Director Anna Brown also shared success stories with her 12 new volunteers. And it was a beautiful day to let the fur fly. 51 area pups are, are headed off to find their forever homes. Saturday, Wings of Rescue boarded the animals onto their plane with the help of Octavaha County Humane Society, Small Mercies Animal Rescue, and a few other local partners. Wings of Rescue is a charity that flies pets from overcrowded shelters to shelters that have more space. Flights are typically bi-monthly and are funded by the ASPCA and greatergood.org. Valentine's Day. It's a time for chocolate, flowers, dinner reservations, and in this case, some slime. Mom to Mom is next. Stay with us. WCBI News at 10 p.m. with Cash Matlock. Welcome back, everyone. As if Valentine's Day wasn't gross enough, now it's a whole lot more slimy. Here's this week's Mom to Mom. Today on Mom to Mom, we have a fun and simple Valentine's craft for your preschoolers as well as kids of all ages. Today we're making Will You Be My Valentine's Slime Valentine's Cards. Moms, I know we hate slime because it's super messy and it gets everywhere, but it's a great sensory activity for those kids and the recipients are going to love it. Let's start with the slime. First, you're going to need some glue. I always choose Elmer's glue because they've made it super simple for you. You just need two steps, that's it. So you've got Elmer's glue and then you have the magic liquid is what they call it. And then of course, I want to get fancy with mine and have a little red glitter. So we've got our glue, our magic liquid, and some glitter, and we're gonna start the slime. This recipe is really easy. All you need is about one tablespoon of activator per eight ounce of clear Elmer's glue. You throw that into a mixing bowl, put your glitter in there as well, mix it all together, put it in your Ziploc bags, and you've got your slime. The card is just as easy. All you gotta do is take your Ziploc baggie, measure it out on the red construction paper, Cut it, then cut a little heart out on it, decorate it however you want, attach the slime, and then you've got your Valen Slime cards. This was fun and easy and definitely better than a plain, simple Valentine's card. As always, moms, we'd love to hear about those wonderful Valentine's ideas. You can post them to our Facebook page, and we'll see you on the next Mom to Mom. Oscars weekend brought a new number one at the box office, starring an Oscar nominee. David Daniel has early weekend estimates for the top five films. Jumanji The Next Level took in five and a half million dollars for another fifth place finish and a domestic total of 298 million. Doolittle dropped to number four, earning 6.7 million dollars. 1917 and its 10 Oscar nominations took third place on ticket sales of nine million dollars. All the towns are no go. So we got people here, dangerous people. We're dangerous people. After three weekends on top, Bad Boys for Life fell to second, grossing $12 million for a domestic total of $166 million. Silence. Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn easily debuted on top, though its opening weekend total of $33.3 million was considerably lower than expected. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. It is the calm before the storm. Temperatures still mild out there. Most of us are reporting a mostly cloudy sky. Already some showers and storms at Oxford. All of us get them tomorrow. We'll talk about it right after this.
WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with meteorologist Jacob Dickey. It is calm and quiet across the region. Temperatures right now sitting in the low 60s and upper 50s. Clouds are moving on in. As expected, winds continue to be a bit breezy. As we check our temperatures around the region, again, seeing the upper 50s and lower 60s out there in spots. It is 61 right now in Columbus and in West Point and in Starkville. 59 in Houston, 61 in Tupelo. Where we are sitting now, is warmer than our average highs for this time of year. Some showers are already making their appearance here into the region. Scattered showers and a few rumbles of thunder. Nothing significant, no severe threat tonight, but you may wake up to some thunder and some heavy rain before the morning rolls around. Tonight, we'll drop down into the middle to upper 50s across the region. Few of us will stay at 60. That includes Winona and Kosciuszko. 56, though, in West Point and in Aberdeen. 53 in Vernon. Columbus will get down to 55 tonight. Tomorrow, then, widespread showers and thunderstorms are expected throughout the day. Temperatures climb into the low to middle 60s with south and east winds 5 to 15 miles an hour. Gusts may be as high as 25. Those showers and storms will continue into tomorrow night as well. 67, the high in Starkville, West Point, and in Columbus. 66 in Vernon and in Eupora. Bruce at 65, 64 in Coffeeville. Here's what Futurecast has. Notice some of these passing showers and storms overnight tonight. No severe threat. There will be some rumbles of thunder, though. And then by the time we go out the door tomorrow and through Monday morning, widespread showers and a few thunderstorms in the region. Some heavier rain certainly possible with that. Then into the afternoon, a little bit of concern is mainly for some flash flooding here. Showers and storms will continue to form and move over areas where it's already rained tonight and early tomorrow morning. There could be a stronger storm, too. We won't rule that out, but notice how even into overnight Monday, Tuesday morning. Still seeing rain and storms in the same area. This will add up. A little break Tuesday morning, then by Tuesday afternoon, more areas of showers and rain across the region. Now, there is a chance for a strong storm tomorrow. Level 1 threat for the area. If you watch this, that includes you. A low-end threat, though. Can't rule out a storm with a stronger gust of wind, and we'll keep our eyes on that, but not overly concerned. The big threat is flooding. That is what we are worried about. I've got it at high, about as high as we can get without going off the charts here. In fact, the latest extreme rainfall risk, a high probability of widespread flash flooding across the region tomorrow into Tuesday. Something worth watching. There are flash flood watches across the entire area. River flood warnings also. The river flooding will be something we watch not only this week, but into the weekend. Here's the setup for us. A boundary stalls out over our area. We're on the warm side tomorrow. The front stays to the south too. Tuesday, cool rain showers expected, and then it likely starts to lift back to the north into Wednesday and early Thursday. That would give us a chance for perhaps some more showers and thunderstorms. A severe threat included. There is a level three threat on Wednesday. However, still some uncertainty. If this threat materializes, it would be damaging winds with the chance for a couple of tornadoes too. But I want the main focus, the most widespread impacts, to be the biggest concern here, and that's for flooding rains to through Thursday, four to eight inches of rain area wide. There will probably be a swath somewhere in our area that sees higher than eight inches, the way things are looking here. And so this is concerning given all of the rain we have already seen across the region. We'll be keeping a very close eye on the rivers as well as for localized flash flooding as we move forth. So we've got rain through Wednesday and early Thursday morning before things dry out. Friday and Saturday will give a chance for the rivers to recede a little bit, the flooding to go down. Sunday into next week, though, the chance is there for more rain. We'll keep you updated with the first alert. The Bulldogs hosting the Aggies in a top 25 battle this afternoon. Courtney has a recap when we come back. Sports with Courtney Robb. The Bulldogs hosting the Aggies in a top 25 battle this afternoon. Mississippi State again in that top 25 matchup, and it was a back and forth battle. MSU trailing at halftime. Let's just get to the action. Maya Taylor right before she had a standout performance. Getting ready to take on the Aggies early in the first quarter. Guard Kayla Wells to Nadia Jones. The layup off the rim. Aggies up 5-2. Six minute mark in the first guard. Maya Taylor finding Jessica Carter for two. Off the glass. Bulldogs up 6-5. Halfway through the first forward. Rakia Jackson. The spin move. The lay in. MSU going up 10-7, a minute remaining in the first quarter. Wells driving the head fake, pops up, 
knocks it down. MSU still in the lead, 10-9. And five seconds remaining in the first. Jackson makes the floater, 14-11. MSU up after just one. Later in the third quarter, Aggies up by 10. Taylor, the steal. Snags it for the spin move. And the finish off the glass. Texas A&M in the lead, 47-39. 30 seconds left in the third. Taylor, the floater. Texas A&M in the lead, still 47-43. Cutting that lead. Start of the fourth quarter. Taylor driving. Finish with the left-handed layup. Aggies up 49-45. And a couple plays later, guard Jayla Hemingway gets the lefty lay of her own. MSU trailing now, 49-47. And seven and a half in the game. Hemingway misses the tray. Jackson there for the rebound, the putback. MSU in the lead, 52-49. Aggies respond. Guard Aaliyah Wilson, the pull-up. Buckets. MSU in the lead, 52-51, a one-point game. Two minutes remaining. Taylor with the dagger. Bounces it in. MSU 64-55. Taylor dominates the second half. Finishes with 16 points, six assists. Eighth-ranked Mississippi State with the come-from-behind victory, 69-57 against the Aggies. Here's head coach Vic Schaefer after the game. Three sophomores and two freshmen, is that right? I mean, and they're doing it. I mean, I, I, I am just so proud of them. Uh, I just can't tell you. And again, I just, Maya just, I'm just really proud of her. I mean, to see her, she had a presence, y'all. And that's, that's what you're looking for in a point guard. You gotta have somebody that's got a presence. And she had it today. In the second half, I made that a focus. And so once I started getting layups, my confidence got better. And then once I started getting steals, my confidence just went up and up. And my teammates did a great job of telling me, you know, I got this, things like that. So just the energy from everybody, the bench, the fans, just everything, it all just ties into that one moment, that one play. So I just fed off of it and I knew my team needed that. So I just did whatever I had to do to get the win. Staying with action on the hardwood. Hard times continuing for the Ole Miss women. The Rebels on the road against Vanderbilt, falling to the Commodores 63-47. The loss marks the 10th consecutive matchup for Ole Miss, which also marks their 10th consecutive SEC loss as well this season. Next up, Ole Miss heads to Florida on Thursday. Ole Miss softball kept it off the Rebel stint in the NFCA Division I leadoff classic. Ole Miss falling to Liberty 4 2 down in Clearwater, Florida. The Rebels unable to win a single matchup in the early season tournament, leaving 0 5, resulting in an 0 5 start on the season. Mississippi State softball also down in Clearwater, Florida for the NFCA leadoff classic. The Bulldogs having the opposite result this afternoon, state closing out the tournament with a run world battle to North Carolina State 9 0. MSU leaving the tourney with a 4-0 start to the Bulldogs season. Hey, if you're a football fan, sad that it's over. There's a solution for that, and that is the return of the XFL. Some familiar faces going along with that, those highlights after the break. Don't call it a comeback. This weekend, the XFL made its official return with some familiar faces. Former Ole Miss quarterback Jordan Ta'amu and former Mississippi State QB Nick Fitzgerald finding themselves back on the gridiron with the St. Louis Battlehawks. Ta'amu leading the Battlehawks offense against the Dallas Renegades in matchup number one of the season. First quarter, three and change to go. Ta'amu. Back to pass, finds wide receiver Alonzo Russell. 28-yard reception, first down pickup. Hawks unable to capitalize. It's no score all. Second quarter, eight and a half remaining. Send in Nick Fitzgerald, the Mississippi State record holder, on the three-yard rush. First down for the Battle Hawks. St. Louis still trailing three nothing. Under two remaining in the half. To Amu connecting with wide receiver Ladamian Washington. Six yards and enough for a first down. Dallas still in the lead three nothing. Not for long though. Next play before the break. To Amu handing it off to running back Keith Ford. Breaks through the pack. The Texas A and M grad in the end zone. The two-point conversion, no good. St. Louis taking the 6-3 lead. Fourth quarter, Dallas up 9-6, 15 to go to Amu, scrambling out of the pocket. Look at the man with his legs moving, picking up 37 yards, a first down along with it, and into the red zone. 
Only to cap off the drive a few minutes later. To Amu throwing into the end zone, finding Russell a nine yard score. The Battle Hawks take a 12 9 lead and never look back. For the first time ever, the St. Louis Battle Hawks have the team's first win. A great first XFL outing for the former Ole Miss Rebel to Amu. 20 of 27 for 209 yards, one touchdown, no picks, plus 77 yards on the ground. The Battle Hawks get back to it next Sunday at 6 p.m. against. The Houston Rocknecks. That's it for sports. We'll have more for you after the break. Stay with us. Today is National Pizza Day. For centuries, pizza has primarily or, or was primarily a dish enjoyed in Italy. And in the early 20th century, the first American style pizza shops popped up in New York and New Jersey, selling what was called tomato pies. But pizza truly became part of American culture after World War II, as U.S. soldiers stationed in Italy developed quite the taste for it. And Jacob, you were talking about earlier how there's not really uh, any pizza pizza by the slice places around here I'm that we know of. I'm going to and say it doesn't even matter because we all know the best pizza is Chicago <laughs> deep dish pizza. I and that is a hill that, that I will die on <laughs> for as long as I live. I literally could sense you wanting to chime in the entire time. Pizza is my we thing. Get, we could use a slice of dry weather around here. Look at this. Rainfall through Tuesday midday. Two to five inches widespread. Some spots seeing more than six inches and the rain continues into Wednesday and Thursday. Get the latest forecast on your WCBI mobile app. All right, Shaking well, my head. <laughs> yes. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. We'll see you back here tomorrow.